Americans get a lot of flack internationally for appearing to be somewhat apathetic to politics. But today I'm going to be speaking with Christopher Green of Alternative Media Television. He is one American who is not afraid to stand up to our warmongering politicians and demand some answers to tough questions. All right, Christopher, well, thank you so much for being with us. So you great, came, great to be here. You came face to face with John McCain himself this weekend. <laughs> we did, and he's a bulldog, I'll tell you. He was angry, Didn't, did not like the questions we had to ask. Well, you were asking some tough questions. Actually, we're going to go to that clip now. Senator, there are five U.S. warships in the Mediterranean right now. Russia and China allegedly are sending warships as well. Russia, China, and Iran have warned the United States of catastrophic consequences if the United States attacks Syria. What are your thoughts on that? My thoughts are that it, uh, it doesn't concern me in the slightest. So I guarantee you that they will not act. If we, if we uh, uh, launch these strikes uh, against Syria, they will not act. Senator Ted Cruz said yesterday out of Texas that we should not act as Al-Qaeda's air force. Uh, the Al-Nusra Front is fighting alongside the Syrian, the Free Syrian Army, which is directly linked to Al-Qaeda. Why was the United States fighting against Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan, but now fighting alongside them in Syria? I've been in Syria. Have you been in Syria? No. I have not. No, you have not. I have it's also clear that the American people overwhelmingly do not support a war in Syria. Question. A research poll said 91% of Americans Sir, do not support it. How do we trust your judgment? Picking the good and the evil is... Photograph with someone because it appeared in an Al Qaeda newspaper in Lebanon. It it's appeared in the Guardian newspaper. No. You obviously know what I'm talking about. How are we supposed to trust your judgment if you're photographed with known terrorists? Wow, Christopher, he looked really uncomfortable. <laughs> he was very uncomfortable. You know, I think he thought maybe at first we were Fox or ABC or NBC or one of the, you know the mainstream media propaganda networks. And then he realized that the questions we were asking, that I was asking of him, uh, weren't your typical questions. They were very hard-hitting. Uh, one of the first questions I asked were, you know, John, uh, you know, China, Russia, and Iran have warned of catastrophic consequences if the United States strikes Syria. And he guaranteed, I mean, this is unbelievable. I've never seen a politician really be able to guarantee anything, but he guaranteed that Russia and China, global superpowers, will not act, will not retaliate, and just really shrugged it off as rhetoric uh, and really doesn't care about what the rest of the world thinks. Uh, pretty unbelievable. Well, you know, that's how he earned his reputation for being the mavericky, the mavericky McCain. So he doesn't need to care what America thinks. <laughs> yeah, he really doesn't. And, you know, questions that Americans should ask, a uh, big question is, you know, why we've been fighting wars overseas in the Middle East for decades uh, in places like Iraq and Afghanistan. Of course, we have the non-wars that we don't admit to in places like Yemen and Pakistan and the ongoing drone strikes, uh, et cetera. But the second question that I asked is, you know, why is the United States, why have we been fighting against al-Qaeda, which is demonized here uh, in the U.S. as, you know, Durka Durka, Team America, you know what? Uh, but now we're fighting alongside those same terrorists. We're arming them. We're funding them. We are sponsoring them on the ground in a bloody, violent uh, civil war to overthrow and topple a government, which they always call a regime. I always notice the propaganda spin, a government, uh, Bashar al-Assad. And, you know, one of the things I didn't really get to ask was, you know, what motive does, did Bashar al-Assad even have? Uh, to use chemical weapons on his own people. He has been winning the war up to this point. Uh, we have had zero evidence uh, from Washington. The White House put out a four-page report that looked like a third grader had written it. No concrete facts. Totally uh, inconclusive. Uh, we had Russia. This is another question I didn't get to ask him. I was going to ask him if he'd, he's read the 100-page report uh, that's come out of uh, uh, Russia, which is basically diametrically opposing uh, the United States accusation uh, that Assad's government used these chemical weapons. The evidence actually is pointing to the contrary, uh, that it's, it's the insurgents on the ground, the terrorists. I don't like to call them the Free Syrian Army. These are, these are terrorists trying to overthrow uh, Assad's government. Uh, so, so those were some of the questions that we were asking that we never really, uh, really got to, Leanne. Right. Well, and he wasn't going to answer them anyway because he was deeply offended by 
your tough, hard-hitting questions. <laughs> they don't like that. So yeah. why was McCain actually there meeting with, with the town of Prescott? You know, really to placate the American people, to pretend that they actually care, uh, and to pretend that we actually have a representative government here in America, uh, which we no longer have. And just to give you an idea, I mean, it was a very tense environment. While we were there, there was a gentleman, oh, I think is an American hero, another video we put out that InfoWars uh, had featured, where a guy calls for John McCain to be arrested uh, and tried for treason. And what was abundantly clear is that nobody in that room wants a war with Syria. I read a research report earlier that day that said 91% of Americans don't want a war in Syria. So we're telling our representative, hey, McCain, we don't want a war. And he's just placating the public. He's on a plane right now if he's not already in Washington, D.C., and they're, they're readying themselves to act. They're readying themselves to strike. So my question is, how do we have a representative government if the people are saying no and our leadership is doing the exact opposite? Now, keep in mind, uh, McCain, you know, th these are very war-hungry politicians. We, we were just in Iraq. We're still there. Uh, we were sold the lie and the false pretense by the George W. Bush administration that it was WMDs, WMDs, weapons of mass destruction. That was the reason we had to invade Iraq and topple Saddam Hussein. That was a lie. That was an utter fabrication. And so these people have no track record. They have a track record of being liars, of lying to the American people. How can we be expected to trust these politicians anymore? You know, another question I didn't get to ask is, you know, we're coming off uh, just a few years ago where we spent trillions of dollars in bailout money uh, to bail out the same cronies that just ripped off America. I mean, nothing's changed in Washington. And th the key factor here is that what Washington is concerned about is not really just Syria, although this will open up a bigger wound, a bigger flesh wound in the Middle East, I believe will uh, work itself into a regional conflict. What the United States and Israel are concerned about is Iran. They are very mm -hmm. worried about Iran and their nuclear capability. So this war in Syria is very much about Iran. And, and that's why the American people need to be concerned about this, because you have big global emerging superpowers in the name of Russia and China, basically calling the United States bluff. McCain seems confident, and he guaranteed that these countries will not act, will not retaliate. Well, as an American and somebody that loves this country, I'm not so sure about that. Right. Actually, when you were asking him those questions, McCain, his response reminded me a lot of when Bush, uh, when W was confronted, when he sort of changed the war rhetoric from Osama bin Laden to then Saddam Hussein. And he said, well, I'm not worried about Osama bin Laden. He's the least of my worries. Now we need to worry about these weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Like, and the media just went with it. They were like, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. You know, that sort of reminds me of exactly what McCain is doing here. Like, you know, I'm not, yeah, I'm not worried about that, so. <laughs> absolutely, it, it feels very much like an instant replay, but, but this is far more dangerous in my opinion. This is mm. not Iraq, this is not Afghanistan. Uh, this is very, very scary. I mean, keep in mind, Russia collapsed. Uh, they, they collapsed in a war. Uh, with in, in Afghanistan. This, this could very, very well be how the United States ultimately collapses, uh, you know, coming off of 2008. No one wants to talk about what's happening economically right now. The fact that we have a debt that's spiraling out of control, mm -hmm. that we're operating on thin air, 0% interest rates, quantitative easing into infinity. This is all about debt. This is about insolvency. Uh, in, in bankruptcy here in the United States. This is, another re this is another way that the United States can actually reset that debt by dropping bombs on innocent civilians. And see, this is a, a fundamental point that we all need to consider. The U.S. government, in my opinion, could care less about the civilians on the ground in Syria. Uh, they, they, care about, uh, they care about money. Uh, they care about resetting the debt here in the United States, and they care about power. So selling us on the idea uh, that this is a humanitarian effort. You notice how the president, Barack Obama, always likes to lump the kids in it. You know, what about the children? What, you know, children are dying. He did the same thing with gun control and Sandy Hook and these mm -hmm. other false flag events that we've had. This is just mainstream media and political propaganda to push the United States into another war with the real sights on Iran. Bottom line, Israel and the United States want to destroy Iran. 
Right. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what Carrie just uh, came out today and was talking about, you know, the Holocaust and Rwanda and sort of tugging on all these times when the world just sat aside before in the past and, and you know, hundreds of thousands of people have died. So he's really tugging on America's heartstrings to say, you guys should be compassionate about this situation here. Why do you think that they're going with this angle of compassion and humanitarianism? Well, that's, the, that's, that's a very easy way to garner support uh, among the people that are too busy watching football or, you know, being entertained, you know, at the movie theaters or going about their day-to-day -day lives to really be concerned about Syria. I mean, I have people I talk to, they say, Christopher, I don't care about the Middle East, nuke the whole place. Um, that's honestly how a lot of Americans feel. Mm -hmm. I, I'm amazed by that. Um, I, I think America has something else coming to it. If they think we're just going to continue to strike these countries without any repercussion, and what it's done is it's formed a coalition in the Middle East. You know, these mm -hmm. countries in the Middle East have their differences, but they have a common enemy in the United States now, and they're getting stronger. And it's not just Syria. It's not just Iran. It's emerging superpowers like China and Russia that we need to be concerned about. This, this goes back all the way to Edward Snowden. The surveillance war that we are fighting, this information war, these, these leaks, uh, you know, everything we do now is, you know, pre-programmed, being monitored on a daily basis. So we are in an information war, we are in a surveillance war, and we are very much living through a physical war uh, overseas. You know, people think that it can't happen here. They think that the United States can't be invaded. They, they don't think that we could potentially have Chinese invade our country. You know, I, I, I joke, you know, I wonder what the debate on gun control will be like once we're invaded. You know, people are going to wish, you know, uh, maybe they'll think twice about it when that happens. Exactly. Well, the video that we just watched uh, has already gotten about 60,000 views on alternative media television. And then the other one where the man was calling for John McCain's um, to be tried for treason, that's gone over, over 100,000 views here. So it's definitely an info war going on. But I'm curious, how long was McCain in that room with you all? And then what was his demeanor like after you all really hit him with those hard questions? Yeah, the demeanor was really tense. Uh, he was there for about an hour. Um, there were uh, just regular people, Americans, good Americans, like the guy that called for John McCain to be arrested and tried for treason, speaking, uh, raising their voices, raising concerns. Part of the story that you didn't see is when we turned off the cameras, McCain actually got in our face and started yelling at us. Wow. Uh, I mean, bull, bulldogging. <laughs> it was a confrontation. Uh, and uh, basically said that we, he said something along the lines that we, we gave the media a bad name. That's mm. what he said, because we're asking tough questions of our politicians. We're holding these people accountable. We're saying we don't want a war. We're arguing with them. I mean, this is the representative media, and people like McCain, they need to get used to it. Uh, because they're going to be seeing a lot more of us. They're going to be seeing a lot more of InfoWars. And they just can't stop us. This is representative media now. And this is a representative republic. And these people work for us. I think a lot of Americans forget that. Uh, and our politicians need to be reminded of that. So if we do not want a war here in America, we should not go to war. And to do anything else really is, as this guy called for in that video that has 100,000 plus views, really is an act of treason. Exactly. Well, speaking of, of alternative media sort of winning the info war, talk to me a little bit about your radio program. You've got the YouTube channel, Alternative Media Television. Correct. We've got a YouTube channel that has really exploded in recent months over the past few years. Uh, we have over 100,000 plus subscribers, 16 million uh, views worldwide. Uh, this has just been a grassroots effort from the very beginning. Uh, sometimes I'm amazed of how far we've come. We are entirely supported and funded by our audience. And we focus on truth. We ask the hard-hitting questions every single day. I have a radio show as well. You can find us at amtvmedia.com. Uh, and you can find us at AMTV uh, and Seagreen34, which is our handle on YouTube. And we are just growing like gangbusters right now. We are very, very excited. And we will keep asking and demanding that these politicians answer us when we speak to them. Uh, so it's pretty incredible how the paradigm of traditional archaic media is changing, and it really is power to the people. Uh, we're adding all kinds of amazing contributors to our platform, um, and it's, it's a very exciting time for us. 
Well, we are very excited to see what you are going to come up with next. The way you stuck it to McCain this weekend, I'm sure we're going to have a lot more interesting and controversial videos coming out of uh, alternative media television. Christopher, Absolutely. thank you so much. Thank you. Well, there is the rise of alternative media.